Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to the name of the living God. I all welcome you in the name of the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God who created heaven and earth. I'm Maureen Abanda, based in Boston, and glad to share with you this good news, the good news that will encourage you, the good news that will uplift you in faith in Jesus' mighty name. As the world is mourning, as the world is in great fear, tribulation, and trials, in travail, our God is mighty to save. Our God is mighty to heal. Our God is mighty to intervene. He's a God that comes in at the right time. Once the world surrenders to him, God will do what he can do best. So I just urge you, my sister, wherever you're watching from, just share this message with a loved one, with a friend, and encourage them. God has not failed in this, but he wants us to acknowledge him. He wants us to acknowledge his power. He, want, he, he wants us to acknowledge his greatness. God is above what you think. He's above all our wisdom. He's above all scientists. He's above all doctors and physicians. He's above all governments. God is above all wealth. So we should put our trust in the Lord. For he has not forsaken us. He's amidst this. He is with us. This reminds me of the story of Jesus when he was with the disciples in a boat. There was a great storm. They were panicking. They did everything they could, but they failed. And at last they remembered they had a savior in the boat. And he was... He pretended like he was sleeping, but I believe he was awake. He knew everything that was going on. Because Jesus Christ was 100% God and 100% human. Isn't that amazing? So when they woke him, our Lord, our Lord, don't you see the boat is sinking? He came and just said, be, he talked to the storm, be still. And the Bible says, the storm came down. That is the Lord I'm talking about. In this season, in this time of great trial, when the world has failed, when the world is facing something that is unusual, something that has never happened, God has not failed. God is with us. God is with those who believe him. God is coming to those who trust him, who are believing him in these hard times, who are putting their trust, their life in his hands. He's going to set them free in Jesus' mighty name. God is going to heal you. Our God is a powerful God that heals. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 15 from verse 26 that I am the Lord that healeth. God is the God that heals. No matter what you're suffering from, some of you are already affected by this coronavirus. Your loved ones have died. Your friends, your closest workmates have died and you're aware of that. You're afraid? I tell you, do not be afraid for God is with you. He's a God who heals. You who is listening to me right now, if you believe in God, if you pray to him, if you surrender everything to him, your wisdom, your understanding, and your everything, your burdens unto him, he will heal you. Some of you are suffering from cancer, hypertension, diabetes. Just mention it. God didn't say that he heals this and leaves the other. He heals everything. The Bible tells us in Psalms 103 from verse 3, it says, our God forgives all our iniquities and heals all disease. That is the God we serve, all disease. He doesn't say this or the other, but all. As long as you put your trust in him, as long as you pray about what you're going through, he will intervene in and heal you in Jesus' mighty name. Again, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 41 from verse 10, it says, do not be afraid, for I'm with you and I'll not forsake you. My dear friend, God is with you amidst this storm. You who is calling upon the name of the Lord, you will not die. You will live and proclaim the good works of the Lord. God is not man to lie. He fulfills his words and all his words are perfect yes and amen he fulfills them god is going to heal you in jesus's mighty name because amidst this don't say where is god why isn't he intervening he is the god of the right time he waits for everybody to try and fail but when they surrender to him that's when he'll do his perfect will god is going to answer your prayers god is going to heal you by the power in his mighty healing hand in jesus's mighty name the Bible tells us in Psalms 118 from verse 17 that I shall not die. I will live and proclaim the good works of the Lord. You and your household will not die. You and your friends, your siblings, your family members, your parents, your workmates, you who believe in the God, you are trusting God in this hard time. You who are trusting God above everything, I just let you know, you will not die. Just keep mentioning that to yourself. Whenever you feel like fear is overtaking you, say, I will not die. I will live and proclaim the good works of the Lord. Which good works are you going to proclaim? You're alive when other people are dead. That's a good work. You're breathing when other people are on life-supporting machine. That's a good, a good work of the Lord. He is going to heal you. He will strengthen you. Just be strong and praise him. Just be strong and worship him. When we see this Palm Sunday rem reminds us of what? Why do we celebrate Palm Sunday? This is the day that Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem. As the Bible says in the prophecy that was given in Zechariah chapter 9 from verse 9. 
you read there. I know you'll have time. I've just shared this for a short while, but I just want you to read the Bible, the prophets that talks about Jesus Christ. And now it comes to pass in John 12 from verse 12. It talks about the time when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. People were jubilating. People were praising. People were worshipping him because the Savior had come. The King of Kings was coming into Jerusalem, as the Bible says. These people got their palms. They waved them up, praising him, exalting him above because good news was just coming into the city. These people, they knew there was going to be victory. They laid the palm over, over across the road. Their good clothes just to worship him that is a great sign of worship now you who is watching me who is listening to me today who is listening to me this what does this teach you these people laid their good cloth across the road they laid the palms across the road for the savior to walk through this teaches me that we should lay something into our hearts spiritually that's what it means to me you should put yourself right with the lord repent for the hour is at hand our lord and savior is coming back any time from now as i speak the hour is at hand and this is the time because everything that is going around is not new that's why i'm not scared i'm just in worship i'm just exalting him and thinking about his mighty greatness because the bible talks of this all these people said hosanna hosanna the word hosanna means save now let him come and save the world out of this coronavirus. Let him save your soul. Let him save your family. Let him save your loved ones. Let's, let him save those who are in hospitals. That, be, that is the Lord I'm talking about. So what was I talking about? About laying the clothes across the road. Did you ever realize the Bible tells us that we are God's holy temples? But the God's holy temple this time, some of us have gone astray. We have fallen short of, your, of God's glory. This is the time to repent. This is the time to do God's perfect will. We should love. Because the Bible st says the, the, greatest command, the greatest commandment in the Bible is love one another. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Who is your neighbor? Anyone you come across. Anyone you see. Because everybody was created in God's image. No matter what color, no matter what race, we are all in God's perfect image. Because he's a perfect designer. Him who created nations in different ways different colors, different languages, that is the God who is great. So do not like, do not segregate, do not judge, do not hate, but forgive everyone. Forgiveness is the key to prosperity. Forgiveness is the key that will lead you to be forgiven and then you'll enter the kingdom of God. You should forgive, love, and wish others good. Then worship God alone. Do not worship idols. Do not worship money. Do not worship buildings. Do not worship leaders. Do not worship any worldly things. Because the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 5 about the Ten Commandments of God. God says we should not make anything that which is on earth, under the earth, or above, that we should worship apart from him. He is the only God that we should worship. He is the one who created you. The God who enabled you to stay in your mother's womb, live in your mother's womb for nine months. You did die. You did die because he loved you. He had good plans for you. He has enabled you to live from day one up to now. I don't know how old you are, but that has been God's power. That has been God's plan. And still, even amidst this great storm, God has good plans to, sp to prosper us. Do not fear to die, but mind about your inner man. You may die physically, but where will your soul go? So this is the time that we should look around ourselves. Check yourself inside. Have you been walking right with the Lord? Have you been fornicating? Repent. Have you been masturbating? Repent. Have you been, are you like a gay, a lesbian? This is the time you should repent. God doesn't want that. Are you a prostitute? Repent. Are you an adulteress? Repent. Are you a hater? Repent. Are you a murderer? Repent. Wash your heart with the blood of Jesus. Call upon his mercy. That one that they said, Hosanna, Hosanna too. He's the God who heals. He's the God who can cleanse away all your sins. And he will make you a new creature in Jesus' mighty name. Today, if you accept the Lord and Savior, my dear, you'll be healed. Today, if you accept the Lord to take over everything that belongs to you, he will intervene in each and every situation of your, of, of your life. He's a dependable God. Our God is reliable. You can rely on him with everything. 
you can fail, your mother failed, your father failed, your friends failed, everybody, experts failed, but God can never fail in this. My dear, surrender your life to God. As we worship him, as we exalt him, as we remember his goodness, do not fear. Fear is for the devil, but faith, uh, faith, faith is for God, and God wants us to be faithful. When we read in the Bible, people who were, who were blessed by God, people who, who made God like the people who used to communicate to God and took God's blessings, those are the people who were faithful and they lived by faith. We can see Abraham, he lived by faith and when God promised him a, a, a son, he, he, knew, he had faith that, it, faith that it will come to pass and indeed it came to pass. We look at Noah, God promised him, told him to make an ark. He did it by faith because by that time there was no storm. There was nothing like a flood, but he did it by faith. Do you have faith in the Lord? This is the time that you have to surrender everything. This is the time that you have to worship the Lord. Let God be exalted above this coronavirus. Let our God be exalted above the sickness. Let God be exalted above that death. Let God be exalted above the graves because he is above everything. Him that resurrected after three days, he is able to resurrect with everything that belongs to you. He is able to make you strong again. No matter what the news are saying, no matter how many numbers are increasing every day, our God is more than able. Our God is more than able to heal. For he said, do not fear. I'm with you and I'll not forsake you. God can never forsake the world. He is with us and he has good plans to prosper us. Just go onto your knees wherever you are and plead the blood of Jesus to cleanse you as you worship him, as you say, Hosanna, Hosanna, because victory is coming onto our lives. Victory is coming to our nations. Victory is coming to the world. Victory is coming to the sick. They will be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Nobody will die because God gives life. He loves